Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 30th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, the big news today is we don't have a new version of Log4j. We are still at 2.17.1 as the latest version. And just to summarize all the different versions of Log4j, depending on what Java version you're running and also what each version is vulnerable to, Rust put together a little table just summarizing the recent Log4j activity. So you may find that helpful if you're trying to explain what the purpose of each one of these upgrades is. Well, somewhat related to Log4j, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint apparently is giving you some false positives slash unclear warnings if you're running Windows Server 2016. So if you're seeing these possible sensor tampering in memory warnings, that's likely caused by Microsoft 365 Defender scanning for log4j processes. Pleeping Computer summarized some of the posts from users, also Microsoft's response. Apparently they're working on a fix for this problem. And T-Mobile is warning some of its customers of a potential SIM swapping attack. This is when an attacker is essentially registering a new phone for your account in order to then intercept messages. SIM swapping is often sort of a one-off attack. If an attacker is able to social engineer, for example, a phone company in order to add that new phone to an account. But there have been instances where it has happened in large numbers and this this may be one of these instances. Sometimes this involved data leaked in breaches. Uh, sometimes it's also insiders that cooperated uh, with attackers in order to facilitate SIM swapping. Not a lot of uh, detail yet from T-Mobile, but if you got one of these messages, well, that's uh, what it's about. And yes, you should probably not use SMS as a second factor for high value accounts, in particular when it comes to high value accounts, two factor authentication should also not be an excuse for having a sloppy password. Now, in the old days, if you gave your kids a Fisher Price phone for Christmas, well, they usually could only sort of make pretend phone calls, but the latest version of this phone does have Bluetooth built in and essentially works as a speakerphone for any smartphone or any other phone that can connect via Bluetooth. Before you go and throw out the kids' Christmas presents, well, uh, this may actually be a nice lesson for the kids to explain to them why good pairing is important for Bluetooth. Apparently, that's not happening with this phone. And as a result, an adversary could easily intercept uh, connections between the phone and the smartphone it's paired with. And essentially eavesdrop on conversations. So maybe a nice sort of a little uh, test to go through if you have one of those phones. Other than that, not sure why buy a rotor phone. Anyway, for the kids, they probably don't even know how to use them. Well, and that's it for today. And it's it for December and for this year. This was the last podcast for this year. Thanks everybody for uh, listening and uh, subscribing to this podcast as usual. If you like it, uh, let me know how to make it better or let me know what you like about this podcast. And as usual, the more people are listening, the more likely I'm going to continue this for a few more years. So Spread the word and that's it. Uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye.